All right, thanks for watching. And if you don't like dedicant cuts, then this video is for you because today we'll define the real numbers via decimal expansions, which is really the way you're more acquainted with. And in fact, as a motivation, let me define pi. So what does it mean to say pi is 3.1415 dot dot dot? And I stop here because I don't know more digits of it. And notice the following. Pi, that's 3.1415, etc., etc., but that's really 3 plus 1 tenth plus 4 hundredths plus 1 thousandth, etc., etc., and that's really 3.1415 plus 1 over 10, plus 4 over 10 squared, plus 1 over 10 cubed, plus dot, dot, dot. And more generally, you can write this as k plus d1 over 10, plus d2 over 10 squared, plus d3 over 10 cubed where k is an, an integer, d1, all the di is your digits between 0 and 9. But the question is, what is dot, dot, dot here? Okay. What does it mean to say pi is 3.1415 something? And remember, at this point, we don't know what the series is. We just know what a sequence is. But luckily, we can actually define that more precisely, namely by just considering step-by-step uh, -step terms in some sense. So more precisely, What do we have? Define the following sequence. Define Sn by the first term is just 3. So S0 is 3, which is k. And then S1, it's 3.1, which is again 3 plus 1 tenth. S2, it's 3.14. So 3 plus 1 tenth plus 4 over 10 squared. And more precisely, Sn is up to the d up to the nth decimal place. So Sn is just 3.1415 dot 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 up to dn. So that's 3 plus 1 tenth plus 4 over 10 squared plus a finite sum, so well-defined, dn over 10 to the n. Now here's the thing. This sequence isn't just an arbitrary sequence. It has some very special properties. First of all, notice this sequence is bounded above. All those numbers, they're actually smaller than 4, and that's guaranteed. So notice, not only Sn is bounded above. In this case by 4, but 4 it's really 3 plus 1, so in general it's k plus 1. And not only that, notice at each step we're adding positive terms. So actually, this sequence is increasing. So this 3.1 is bigger than 3, 3.14 is bigger than 3.1. So actually, Sn is also increasing. And what do we have? A bounded above sequence that's increasing. Bam! We can use the monotone sequence theorem. So we know this sequence is convergent. So by MST, monotone sequence theorem, Sn converges to S. And what is S? It's really just this infinite uh, decimal expansion. S, which is, again, really symbolically is 3.1415. But it's precisely this limit that we call pi. Okay. 
So, in other words, what is a real number? It's just a limit of decimal expansions, okay? And again, that's really what you think of in your mind, 3.1415 dot dot dot, but it's really the dot 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 is just a result of taking successive increasing sequences. So, definition. R is just the set of all those limits, so of all decimal expansions, of the form, again, k dot d1, d2, d3, etc., etc., where k is an integer, and then each di is a digit between 0 and uh, 9. So again, um, this is a very natural definition, which is, again, the one you've been acquainted with. However, there are many problems with this definition. And there's really a reason why we usually define real numbers with Bedekind cuts instead of this one. Because look, okay, real numbers are just decimal expansions, but then how would you know, for instance, if square root of two even has a decimal expansion? Remember, square root of 2 is this number whose square is 2. How would you know that number has a decimal expansion? So, in theory, what you could happen, you could have that the decimal expansions do not cover all the real numbers that we know. So, there could be a real number without the decimal expansion. However, one can prove in section 16, which I won't cover, unfortunately, that indeed every real number has a decimal expansion. Here's another issue. How can we distinguish rational numbers with real numbers? You see, uh, in other words, what special decimal expansion does a rational number have? And again, this, at, at this point, we don't really know. Later, if you're interested, we can show that the rational numbers have periodic decimal expansions. And not only that, the biggest problem, how can we show, using only this definition, that uh, the real numbers satisfy the least upper bound property? Suppose I tell you real numbers are those expansions. How do we know that every non-empty set that's bounded above has the least upper bound? Good luck proving that. So you see, the thing is, um, delicate cuts, I know they look very ugly, and don't judge them, they have their own beauty, but um, they might look very ugly, but they make proving least upper bound properties very elegant. So you see, that's why I tortured you with that other uh, definition. And not only that, there is another issue because it turns out not only is this definition bad, it's also flawed. Because let me illustrate the following scenario. What you would like, in theory, is that two different decimal expansions should give you two different numbers. But look at the following. What is... 0 0.99999. And for this, we need just a little result from a uh, geometric series, which is in your book, but also may have no may know it from calculus. So fact, not example. Um, if R is between minus one and one, then one plus r plus r squared plus dot dot dot. So the limit of those partial sums of those sequences is actually 1 over 1 minus r. And again, you can show this 
But more importantly, how do we apply this to this example? Well, 0 0.999, well, by definition, that's just 9 tenths plus 9 over 100 plus not 9,000, but 9 over 1,000. That, that, that. And really what this is, is 9 tenths times 1 plus 1 tenth plus 1 hundredth plus that, that, that. And it's really 1 plus 1 tenth plus 1 tenth squared plus 1 tenth to the third power. So it's really this thing, but with r equals 1 tenth. So it equals to, again, r is 1 tenth. So again, this factor 9 over 10 over 1 over 1 minus 9 over 1 minus 1 over 10. Because again, that's the factor here. And so it's 9 tenth over 1 over 9 tenth. And really that's 9 tenth times 10 over 9. Boom, 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 boom. And that's 1. In other words, this number 0 0.99999, it's almost German, 99999, it becomes 1.0000. So in fact, notice, two different decimal expansions may give rise to the same real number which, again, ideally we do not want to have. We would like that different expansions give you different real numbers. And in fact, that was true for cuts. Different cuts give you different real numbers. And however, uh, last thing I want to say, there is a way to get around this. Simply say that, uh, throw away all the decimal expansions that terminate into an uh, infinite string of nines. So define the real numbers to be all the decimal expansions, again, where di is a digit between 0 and 9, but ignore all the uh, decimal expansions that end with bunch of 9s. So in this case, we would throw away this number, but just leave 1.000. And in that way, we actually have that every um, decimal expansion gives rise to exactly one real number one-to-one -one way in some sense. All right, thank you very much.